people welcome to raising our alliance if this is your first time on this channel thank you for stopping by uh, we are a family of six that homeschool and we are living in a school league which is a school bus turned to tiny house if you're coming by then thank you so much for stopping by and sticking with us today video is going to be of my countertop and my sink area the little space i have to try to change it up because um we were in a rush building the sink because we changed the layout of the bus when we first started out with the bus we had a bunk bed in the middle but then we decided to move the kids in the back to give them more space that means everything had to be switched around so when we switched everything around i needed a sink then and now so we just cut some wood out put a sink on there plumb it up and then we i got some paper um peel a stick paper off amazon i cost like two bucks and put it on there it's waterproof heat resistant it started peeling off because we had it on there for months months now um almost i think it was a year because dorian is like a year and a half old now so yes it was more than a year and it just started ripping from the edge of the um the um countertop the sink it was ripping on there and then the inside of the sink which was disgusting um the peel and stick was coming off it was coming off which was putting water into it and it just it was just disgusting so it needed to be fixed now or like yesterday so my mom was taking a kiss and i saw that's an opportunity the kids was gonna sleep over her house i said i can get done with this project i would not have to stop asking um helping a child or a child asking to help me which i love for them to help me but when a child is helping you it take a long time then the project need to take if it was a one hour it took like six hours because you have to um, be patient and work with them because they're slow they're learning and when my kids ask me to be involved in my project i don't want to say no so when they're not being here i don't have to work with them so i, I can do this project and be done with why the kids are gone i was wrong <laughs> the adhesive on the back of the paper it's like it was holding on for its life it refused to come off i don't know what kind of adhesive this company used but it would not come off so it took me more than three hours just to take that little piece off of my countertop sink area and it was just ridiculous and then after i fought with it i had to use a knife to like strip it down the wood on top of the wood uh in where the sink is in the rim of the wood was black and i was like freaking out and was soaking wet with water and i said oh lord i am going to have to replace this wood with all and i didn't want it to because the process of wood right now is high but when the covid the process skyrocketed a piece of plywood that was like 15 dollars is like 50 dollars so i didn't want to go and buy wood that was one of the reasons i decided to pink this because um what is it it's not the same kind of wood i use for my counter top because i just grab stuff from outside and put it on there so if i would have just put a urethane in it would have not look the same so if i paint it it would look the same and i also lower so then i had to wait 12 hours i let it sleep overnight for the water to dry in the wood because the wood was soaking with water it was like a sponge okay? but then next morning it was dry and i sanded it down and thank god jesus the the um black steam just come out i had my mask on because i was like it's mold it's something it wasn't mold i don't know what it was but it came off it's like a dirt black dirt it just came off after i sanded it down and after like a couple of seconds i just went over it and that came off so it wasn't into the wheel, just on top of it. Thank you, Jesus. So I sand that down. And then after I did that, I painted the wood. Three coats of paint. I just painted a hat around the house white paint. I painted three coats. And then I went and draw my lines on there to mimic my mom work. This clip right here is going to explain exactly how I did that. I used this uh, spray paint from Home Depot. I needed black spray paint, so I just grab it. And then I mix it in with some white to get my in a lit to get my great color. And these little brush are for my kids art supply. It, I had a bottle with water in it, which um, is regular tap water in it. And then your, your um, paint brush with paint on it. You're gonna draw a line. Now that I have that line, you're gonna take your water bottle. You're gonna spray. And then you're gonna watch that it's gonna be spreading out. That pins see it's spreading out. And then you're gonna take your your dry brush and just gonna tap it. That way the line is not straight and it don't look perfect. 
because you don't want your line to look perfect. And you see it's like all spreading out. And then what I was doing to someone that, like this one, see it's like that, all I did was just blow it. When you blow it, and it just spread out like that. And that look like, when you see that, it's like a lot of liquid. What I did later on with it when it's about to dry, and then I just top it. But some of them, I left it like that. Um, I just let the water control what the paint is going to do. Because, like I said, it's not going to be perfect. That's what you're going for. And then you can just, if you want to take um, more off, you can just dry your brush. And then just top it, and it'll remove some of that paint off. It's like making its own line. So then you can remove some of that paint off. And then you can make the line very thin or very thick. Um, some of them right here. See that line is that just a liquid coming from that line sliding down. But the rest of it, my lines are pretty, is different sizes. So I'm going to wipe that out because I don't need that there. And I'm ready to epoxy right now. So if you make a mistake, just take your little rod. And then just gonna wipe it off. So after I painted it down and I did my fake marble on there, my next step was to epoxy the um the um countertop to make it look like marble because you need waterproof and stuff like that. So for my material, I went to uh, Dollar Tree and get a bowl to put my epoxy in. Um, I got a big enough bowl for me to put the epoxy in. I need it. You you need that. And then I got a measuring cup. Because your measurement have to be exact or you're just going to have a chemical reaction that you don't want. And then I got a spatula, a silicone one that's flexible for me to miss my positing. And I also had a heat gun to blow for um, the bubble to come out of the positing because you're going to um, have bubbles in there. You can use a heat gun or you can use a blowtorch. I had a heat gun, so I used that. So this specific brand I get from Marco, I use it for like six years now and I know how to work with it, I know what make it tick, what down, the temperature. So I stick with this epoxy, even though it's a little expensive than I would've got Amazon. I stick with it because I have experience using it for my arts and craft and running house and just messy epoxy, I know how it goes. So I use that. But for what you wanna do with this epoxy to decrease your bubble, but if you do have a blowtorch and a heat gun, you really don't need to worry about it. It's just something I don't wanna blow out too much bubble because I don't wanna get epoxy too hot and it get too running. So you want to fold in. You don't want to just miss it and you want to fold in like a batter. Like you're folding your batter in. That's how you want to do it. You just want to fold in until uh, it's all missed. And you're going to know, even though the epoxy is clear, you're going to know the difference if it's not blending in from uh, part A and part B. You can see it while you're missing it. So when it's all blended and unified, now you know you're ready to use it. Um, one thing I'm going to tell you is if you're using epoxy, make sure you're area that you're going to posse is clean because anything any uh, hair or dirt anything that's in your workplace that I posse go over is going to become one with a posse so you're going to see it that's why I'm wiping down everything I wipe down the bowl the bowl multiple times the table multiple times and I'm just wiping to make sure everything is done and I wrap my hair because if I don't I'm going to have a strand of hair popping out that's why I bring my hair in the back and then I wrap it with that to try to keep it in because I don't have a hair net. You want to do that, especially if you have a kinky hair like me, and it just does whatever it want to do. That way you don't have hair dripping in there. You don't have anything uh, in there. So, yes, yeah, so you want to do that. So then you don't want to, if you don't have a big of a space, like what I have, I have a little, I have a little space. You don't want to dump your whole epoxy on there. Then you can't control. You want to dump little by little. That way you can control your portion and wiping it and rubbing it down. My one year old is in there. You can control your portion and spreading it out the way you want to. And not just, oh, trying to rush. It's spreading out because it is liquid. It's going to want to do what it want to do. It's going to want to drop out. But if you put less, you can control that. So that's what I did. I put less and I used my spot shooter, rub it in onto my, my uh, material, my wood countertop. Uh, do that, make sure all my space is covered in. And one thing you're noticing, I am going with my spot shooter and rub it on the bottom of the posse. So this is your countertop, you're putting posse on it. It's going to drip down. 
okay it's going to drip down so you need to be scraping on the bottom you put that on there um, you're going to wait um, an hour and you're going to come back you're going to strip the bottom again and you're going to do that you're going to strip it but you're going to keep doing that because if you don't uh, let me show you what's going to happen if you don't do that so this is what happened if you don't do what I'm what I was telling you about stripping it down right here let me see if you can see you're gonna have can you see yeah so you're gonna have bumps on your table like that I was afraid to get my spatula to touch this um um hinge because I didn't want it to get stuck and not pull down so I just decided to leave that but if you don't this is what's gonna happen you're gonna have bumps on your table because when it's dropped down it's gonna have a little raindrop and that's gonna stay on your table so you want your table to be like that nothing than this one second thing is when you are working with material you're gonna put tip and plastic to try to prevent everything from spilling and touching your stuff that you don't want it to be touching you need to make sure you take that tip off before your posse dry all the way out okay like I said everything that's under your posse is going to become part of Whatever project you're doing is going to become part of it. It's going to seal it in. That's what posse does. It's so if you have tip, that you tip down the area so you don't have a posse on your fridge or another part of the countertop, you need to make sure you remove that when it have the consistency of, uh, is it a pudding or jello? Jello. I don't know what American call it. You eat that, it's in a little thing. It's like chocolate flavor thing anyway you want to have a con you want it when your pus is that consistency so maybe a couple, couple hours you want to pull your tip off before it dry completed pull it off because if you don't um it's going to become part of that and if you do it early in it that and it's too runny your pus is just going to run over to whatever you're trying to protect so you want to do it when it's thick enough that it's not going to run over and it's not too thick where you can't pull the tip off so this is the little uh, rim up here that I use a uh, PVC pipe to close this part of that where water don't go in there just leftover material from the bathroom and I put a tip on there to protect this right here I had the tip across right this is just silicone I just put that on there to protect water from going through that's what that's for it's not a posse but that tip is stuck in there and it's not coming out it's like in with the uh, PVC and the posse that is not coming out at all and you want to make sure your posse take a long time to dry dry you want to I left mine on there for 48 hours to dry and um, because you want it to be completely dry before you touch it because if you don't you're gonna have fingerprint because it may look like it's dry and then you touch it when you pick your hand or you're not gonna feel it but it's gonna have fingerprint on there so you want to make sure it's dry completely if you can go more than 48 hours do that um, I recommend it longer the better um, and you want to have a control environment. I have kids, and when it came up, it was like after 24 hours of me putting it on there, and they saw a shiny new thing, and they wanted to touch it. And when they touched it, it left their fingerprint in there. So right here, this is what I'm talking about. You see, it's not smooth right there because they put a fingerprint in there, and that posse formed to it, and when it dry, it dry like that. So right here. It's not smooth. I think they went like that and drag it. So the fingerprints in there. So if you have any child around that's going to be touching stuff, make sure they're not. So let me show you the final product of my fake marble countertop that look real. <laughs> let me flip this around because this kitchen is tiny. You're not going to see if this camera is on me. this is the end product it's very shiny it glassy look and it just it look like marble like if i wouldn't have done this and walking here i would have assumed this is marble so i'm just gonna go down and you can see this the flip down part this is that line i was working on to demo and it just left a little fit a line it look really good and then this right here I just continue the line over and then when it's down the line continue all the way down to that and but this is the back of it let me move this so you can see back there so I make sure how a posse go in here. This is flat, and then I put a little bit of silicone on it. That way, there's no water going under my knife thing. 
and the powder continue all the way behind my faucet like some light ones there some dark ones and then up there too I just allow the water to do what it's going to do and then it's behind there's some behind my um my Berkey but I'm not gonna move that because I cannot move my Berkey with one hand and I don't want to break a $300 water filter so this is what it is and I am loving it look very very real and it's very shiny you can see the light is flashing on it very shiny and yeah it's just it's beautiful so thank you so much for stopping by and staying with me throughout the whole video I'm learning how to edit and I'm learning how to shoot videos so I'm sorry about the bad quality um, if you like this video please thumb up the video if you don't like it you can thumbs down or better you can comment down below and tell me what you don't like about the video because then I can improve <laughs> hit the subscribe button the more people subscribe the more I feel like these videos are needed and I can make more video you know what I'm talking about it motivate me it motivate me so subscribe I know you want to okay thank you and have a great day